In this interview that Tyson Fury did with Spencer Oliver, he said that the fight with Usyk is not on. And this is, of course, ahead of his trilogy fight with Derek Chisora. Now, this is in contrast to Usyk's people, such as his manager and promoter, who are both saying that Usyk has put pen to paper. He's agreed the deal. He's talked to Queensbury and Top Rank, and everybody on Usyk's side is happy with the terms, and they've all agreed. They're just waiting on Tyson Fury to put pen to paper. Remember, in recent weeks, Tyson Fury has been talking about fighting Joe Joyce. He's been talking about maybe fighting Deontay Wilder again. He's been talking about Anthony Joshua. He hasn't been talking that much about Alexander U. He's been talking about fighting other people instead of Usyk. And this is despite the fact that Usyk and his team say they've agreed their end of the deal to fight Tyson Fury. I find that a bit curious. I hope it doesn't mean that Tyson Fury intends to go in a different direction. Because to my knowledge, none of Fury's team, Frank Warren, Bob Arum, etc., have come out and denied what Usyk's team have been saying in terms of their end of the bargain has been agreed. They've put pen to paper. I haven't heard Frank Warren or Bob Arum deny this. And in fact, I don't think Tyson Fury has denied it. So again, it's curious the things that Fury's coming out with. Now, in terms of saying the fight isn't on in this particular interview, Fury says he's taking one fight at a time. He's focusing on Derek Chisora. He doesn't want to overlook him. He wants to get this out the way before he even thinks about Alexander Usyk. And that is sensible. Because even though he's beaten a man twice, at the end of the day, Chisora is a big, strong, powerful heavyweight. And Fury has been decked by people who don't punch as hard as Derek Chisora. So I've long said that you have different personality types. Well, this is obvious, but you have different personality types in boxing. Some fighters really battle with their nerves. And so in the run-up to a fight, you have to try and calm them down. That's the thing that the trainers and their people around them, they have to try and calm them down, get them into a relaxed mode because their nerves can get the better of them. Then you have other fighters who have a, a mindset, who have a psychology that works in a different way, whereby if they're not sufficiently nervous, they're going to underperform. And somebody like this would be Lennox Lewis. And I would say Tyson Fury fits into the category as well. Tyson Fury is a guy where if there isn't enough nerves there, if there isn't enough tension going into the fight, he can underperform. He can get caught. He can be complacent. You see, so he needs to feel a sense of danger. And so when you're going in there against somebody you've already beaten comfortably twice, where's that sense of danger going to come from? Now, this is where you could get complacent. This is where something crazy could happen if you take your eye off the ball. So I've got no issue with Tyson Fury saying that he wants to get Chisora out of the way first, even though I think Chisora's got, what, a 1% chance of winning? 1% chance is still a chance. <laughs> right? It's a 1 out of 100. So there's still a chance that Chisora could hit lightning in the bottle, but I would have thought it's extremely unlikely based upon their past two fights and based upon the fact that Chisora, to me, looks nowhere near as good as he was when they fought the second time and not even as good as he was two, three, four years ago. I mean, he's getting hurt so much more often now. And he doesn't have the engine that he used to have a few years ago. I mean, you look at Derek Chisora when he fought Dylan White in the second fight. He was relentless. Got knocked out in the 11th round. But he was coming forward the whole fight. Whereas you look at him against Pulev, against Joseph Parker, particularly in the second fight. And Chisora's coming forward only in short bursts, really. You know, only for certain periods in a round, then he'll languish over by the ropes and invite the opponent in. He'll stay in the corner for long periods during the fight and all this kind of thing. And yeah, we have seen that from Chisora earlier on in his career too. Let, let's say in the first Dylan White fight, he did that, I want to say in the second half of the fight against Carlos Takam, you know, he was doing that as well. But that was less out of choice and more out of the fact that Takam was just physically stronger than Chisora and Chisora couldn't push him back. But it's now become almost permanent with Derek Chisora that he just fights this way. He only 
does the pressure fighting for short periods in rounds, and then he spends the rest of the round in the corner or on the ropes or all this kind of thing. It's happening far more often the older Derek Chisora has gotten. And uh, as I say, when you look at all these different factors, you think surely Tyson Fury is going to win this and win it comfortably, maybe more comfortably than the first two fights. But either way, Chisora still has a chance, so I get where Fury's coming from, saying he can't commit to the Usyk fight right now until this is out of the way. Hopefully, he commits to the Usyk fight immediately after beating Derek Chisora. And I'm talking about in the ring, saying, let's do it. I'm ready, ready to put pen to paper and fight Alexander Usyk in the next fight. And of course, that's going to be contingent on, uh, uh, that, uh, you know, on the, him not getting cut or injured or anything like that because Chisora is a tough man. He's got a hard head. You could catch your hand on an elbow, on his forehead, bust your hand. Maybe Chisora comes in with his head aggressively or he catches you with a certain shot and your eye gets cut. These are all dangers. So even if Tyson Fury wins, if he gets injured, then that could jeopardize the uh, Alexander Usyk fight. So let's hope he doesn't get injured. Let's hope he comes through unscathed. You know, all this talk about him standing in the middle of the ring and having a trade-off with Chisora. Yeah, it's all good for the hype and that kind of thing. I hope he doesn't do it in reality. Because even if he wins, you're risking being cut or injured in that kind of scenario. So I hope Fury is sensible, deals with Chisora without taking any punishment, you know, any major punishment. And then we can move on to the undisputed fight with Alexander Usyk, and he needs to commit to that immediately afterwards. There's no reason that he shouldn't, yeah, if, as long as he's not injured, no reason for him to say, oh, well, you know, we've got this option and that option, and there's Joe, jo and there's no reason for all that. If you're the best heavyweight in the world, and you're as good as you say you are, and Usyk's just a little middleweight, and he's a nobody, and you're going to smash him to pieces, then there is no reason why you don't just immediately commit, right? Usyk's already signed, he's already done his end of the deal. No reason why you can't immediately do it yourself. And give us boxing fans what we want, which is an undisputed champion. It will be the first ever in the four belt era at heavyweight. So that's my take on this. Give me your take in the comment section below. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms, and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship-free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, it's decentralized, and it's 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract. There's no commitment. You can cancel at any time and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.